Hello comrades, welcome back to another video on the Ukraine counteroffensive. We are now entering day three of the offensive. So this will be a short summary of the first two days <clears throat> to see how far uh, things have gone by now. So starting in the southwest, we can see that the fighting is still ongoing with new, with no new uh, news, except that they started fighting at Seleni High as well. Meaning that generally they're spreading their forces thin by attacking on the whole front line. Uh, so we shouldn't expect any progress anytime soon, considering uh, how they have decided to fight. At the same time, I decided to report all the shelling in this area since I'm reporting on it extensively. So we have seen Russian shelling in Limani, Stepova, Dulina, uh, Mirne and Shevchenkov. So generally, we're seeing a lot of hitting on the uh, supply stations as well as uh, where the reinforcements and reserves are. So they want to keep them from strengthening their attack by hitting them where it hurts. Further up north, we see fighting and a clash ongoing south of Kisilivka uh, and shelling by Ukraine on Blahodatne as well as uh, Maximivka, and then the Russians are shelling at Kisilivka, uh, Novosilka, no Novosilivka, Vitneve, Cecilia, Pervomaiske, Ilosirka, uh, Cervone, as well as uh, Partishanske. So generally, they're shelling on this whole area and very intense, as uh, most likely they are. Having an artillery duel here, as we can see how they're being shelled back. And then there's some fighting along this road here in the south. So generally, we see that the Russians and the Ukrainians both want to advance in this area. So there's very intense fighting from both sides, uh, as evident by the amount of shelling. Further east, there's also shelling at Chevorna uh, Dulina, as well as Shiroke, to the eastern side of what was previously reported. And on this river, uh, there is shelling around Lyubomirivka. And further east, around the area where the Ukrainians have uh, attained the most, they are currently advancing in an eastwards direction and southwards direction. However, there's been no reports of fight new fighting. And generally, there's been a report of shelling at Losove, as well as Murachivka. Possibly the reason why... And uh, there's been no report further fighting reports of fighting. It's possible that they haven't completely taken Sukhi Stalak and they are still fighting in this area, or that they are waiting with advancing till they get more armored vehicles, as this whole area is very far as well as uh, very open, meaning that they will sustain a lot of casualties before reaching the next village from any point from here on out. And at the same time, Russia is hitting their supply lines and uh, reserves. Further to the north, at the northernmost part, there's shelling at Sarikne, Knyasivka, Olhune, Visokopilia, uh, Novosnensenske, uh, Trudoliubivka, as well as Sele Selenodolsk, and Knyasivka. So generally there's a lot of shelling here as well. And uh, Rybar actually reports Olhune and Visokopilia under Ukrainian control. However, I found a different source uh, contradicting that, saying that it's still under Russian control. So I'm putting it under contested for now. So generally we see a lot of shelling here as well. So my theory is that in the south and in the center where the Ukrainians are advancing the most, uh, I'll give some credit to the theory that the uh, Russians are just pulling them in so that they're able to destroy them. Because as we can see, there's barely any shelling in these areas, generally three or four areas, compared to the other areas where there's upwards of 10 or six, uh, seven shelling areas uh, in the north and uh, western center. Meaning that generally they are very uh, lacking in the shelling in this area. 
And this could be for two reasons, either that they want to draw them in and then shield them once they are be beyond uh, retreatable lines, or that they are getting, getting pushed so far that they cannot shield them. But that wouldn't be true because, as we can see, they're, they've barely advanced anything and no one puts the artillery on the front line to put it behind. So somewhere in this area, generally, uh, the, the artillery would be. So there's no way that uh, they've pushed so far that the Ukrainian uh, Russian artillery uh, is falling back, meaning that generally uh, the most likely scenario is as uh, a lot of people are suggesting that they actually want to draw in the Ukrainian army and then destroy them once they are too far in, uh, which is a very common deception strategy in warfare. So generally that's the situation on the Kherson front. Uh, further east, I made some corrections around uh, Pisky, where I previously had them fighting all the way over here, but generally they are still around the second bridge across this uh, small river, <clears throat> meaning that they are currently fighting in the direction of this area. While the last U Ukrainian contingency was reported to have left uh, earlier to the yesterday, uh, late at, at the evening, meaning that they have 100% of Fisky under control, where previously was 99% to the people who uh, were mad that I reported that early. So generally the fighting is ongoing in this area right now, uh, as they try to take control of this second bridge. <clears throat> now, further to the north around Isium, there are reports of uh, Ukraine planning a counteroffensive in this area. And generally, it's been fairly silent the past couple of days, uh, where there are reports of Ukrainian uh, reinforcing their uh, forces in this area. Also, uh, Ryba reports this as uh, under uh, or reports this as contested. So generally, there's either fighting in this area or either sides own it. But it's been fairly silent the past couple of days. The fighting at Novodimitrivka, Vernopilia, and Karnaukhivka have stopped, but shelling of Virnopilia and Karnaukhivka uh, is still ongoing. Uh, that's it for the frontline update, but there's still another topic I want to talk about quickly, and that is uh, that recently there was a UN voting, and in March 2nd, 2022, 141 nations out of 193, or 70% of UN members, voted to condemn Russia and their actions. While the August 25th, six days ago, only 58 of 193, which is 30%, support a resolution condemning Russia and the war. So basically what has happened is that the situation has completely changed as uh, we see that both Russian influence is rising, Chinese influence is rising, BRICS is rising, and at the same time, the West is falling as the, the, the current situation we see we, we live in is that Russia has invaded Ukraine. And as a result of that, we see uh, the Europeans and the Americans imposing or generally the Western world imposing sanctions on Russia, which has completely uh, destroyed the supply chain coming in and out of Russia and Ukraine. Uh, as a result of both of these uh, decisions. But the way the rest of the world see it compared to uh, the West see it, the West see it as it is completely Russia's fault, as Russia started this war, so they are, uh, they are the ones who are responsible for the mess we're in, while the rest of the world see it as Russia could still uh, export stuff, they could still give us what we wanted from them. And they could even give us stuff they we want from the Ukrainian occupied territory. But the West is kind of blocking that and pre preventing that from happening at the scale it was happening prior to the war. Also with the sanctions, it's more difficult to trade with them. And the sanctions on the banks making it difficult to buy from Russia and so on. So generally they're seeing the West just as complacent. So most likely we'll see a lot of abstainments in the future votes as currently we see how uh, how the world in general is leaning more to we live in a multipolar world rather than a unipolar world. Before, if the United States said 
do anything, everyone would do it. But now we're seeing a situation where most countries don't care what the United States say because they have some other countries to rely on in case they antagonize the United States. And the United States doesn't want to antagonize the whole world, so they will be holding back with their demands as well. So generally, we will see a lot of changes to the world order as well as what's going to happen, uh, especially in the coming winter when everything becomes cold and uh, sad for everyone living in the world. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.